Full Metal Alchemist 2003 stands as one of my favorite anime even to this day. It was the first series that taught me that shonen anime could be so much more than bombastic action and power-ups. It can be thought-provoking, emotional, and even tragic. While many prefer Brotherhood's adaptation of FMA over the original since it more closely follows the manga, I feel that O3 has more interesting thematic elements that are not only relevant but crucial in understanding the underlying ethos of the original series. For context, I enjoyed both O3 and Brotherhood a hell of a lot and think that both series each have their own distinct strengths and weaknesses that warrant different viewings. I feel that O3 has a stronger sense of thematic depth and explores Ed's character in more interesting ways, while Brotherhood props up with a colorful set of supporting characters and terrific world building. However, there seems to be a consensus that people think O3's ending is badly executed, unsatisfying, or even purely nonsensical. I for one couldn't disagree more. From a thematic perspective, I think the ending perfectly encapsulates and strikes to the heart and soul of what the original was trying to convey the acceptance of a harsh reality, but nevertheless finding a way to move forward. The Elric brothers' journey being both the driving force and literal representation of this theme. Which is why I find myself feeling dissonant from the conversation when someone says anything along the lines of, it's such a bad ending, it was so unsatisfying, it came out of nowhere, it doesn't make any sense. It's statements like these that make me question if people even paid attention to the details or even if we watched the same show. This brings me to the purpose of this analysis, in which I hope to clear up any and all misunderstandings of the original series, and provide evidence as to why the ending was a perfect thematic fit that didn't quote unquote come out of nowhere. This won't be a video comparing the two adaptations, but rather shining some light and garnering an appreciation into why I think FMA 03's ending is so masterfully crafted that concludes the series beautifully both thematically and narratively. This should go without saying, but major spoilers for the original Full Metal Alchemist. The ending sees Edward confronting Dante in the abandoned underground city in which it revealed that Dante had been the mastermind all along, manipulating the homunculi and was the cause of all the war atrocities committed in the past and present. Edward learns that Dante had been transferring her soul from body to body in order to achieve immortality and vows to stop her master plan. However, Dante separates Ed's mind, soul, and body and sends him through what they call the Gate. He finds himself waking up in a world without the existence of alchemy, but yet isn't too dissimilar from his own, with wars ranging on nonetheless. This new world where Ed and his father were sent to is very clearly meant to represent our world, or should I say, our universe, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Edward dies in a new world, but his soul, mind, and body make it back through the Gate. Envy fatally stabs Edward, and on the brink of death, Al sacrifices himself using the Philosopher's Stone to bring his brother back. Edward is resurrected, but Al is nowhere to be seen, presumably because he exchanged lives. Ed, however, isn't content with this outcome, and so makes one final exchange. In sacrificing himself and the four years he spent with Al, he's able to revive a younger version of his brother, although with no recollection of the events of the series prior to his mother's transmutation. Edward ends up in a world without alchemy, while Al is determined to study the law of equivalent exchange. But one thing's for certain, they're both alive and promise to one day meet each other again. So what does this all mean? Well, I think it's necessary to first look into what ultimately the Elric brothers' journey was about in order to fully understand the ending. On the surface, FMA 03 is about two boys who seek to restore their bodies after a failed human transmutation by searching for the coveted Philosopher's Stone. The series solely focuses on the Elric brothers as a means to flesh out their characters, but also to understand the world around them. We follow the brothers as they delve deeper and deeper into a morally grey world, where they begin to realize that everything they once knew may not be so black and white. One of the fundamental core messages that's drilled throughout the entire series is skepticism of whole systems and finding the truth of reality for yourself. In the first arc of the series, Ed and Al bring a stop to Cornella's reign, being a false god to all his followers. Although, in doing so, Rose says she has nothing to hope for anymore, which makes sense considering her personal circumstances. Rose was a girl who had blind faith in her religion, and when her faith turned out to be misplaced in Cornello, Everything she once knew was, effectively, a lie. 
She turns to Edward, asking what she's meant to do now, to which Edward replies, You've got a strong pair of legs, so get up and use them. Full Metal Alchemist presents this idea that living ignorantly in a fake reality should never hold weight over the harsh truth. You should never be content living a life full of lies, but rather find meaning for yourself despite a cruel reality. It's an empowering message that both brothers continue to believe throughout their journeys. While Edward can be described as overly confident and arrogant with childish ambitions, a tragic element to his character is his inability to accept death. How fitting is it then when at every turn of the story, he's faced with it? From the transmutation of his mom and brother, to the deaths of Nina and Hughes, to even his search for the Philosopher's Stone. At every corner, death is a natural part of life. Yet, despite all of this, he continues his search for the truth behind equivalent exchange when there may not even be one. Edward despises the military, yet joins anyway because it brings him one step closer to the truth. He starts out the series believing that war and human conflict are such disconnected ideas that don't affect him in any way, but time and time again, his search for the Philosopher's Stone challenges his beliefs. From the Ishvalan War, military conspiracy, and homunculi, at the center of it all is equivalent exchange and what it means. Ed's sacrifice at the end of the series is him coming to terms with the nature of his reality. Instead of being stubborn and trying to find a way to undo his past mistakes, he finally accepts that his fundamental belief of equivalent exchange was just a child's naive excuse to hide the unfairness and inequality of the world. However, knowing a cruel reality is different from living in one. Edward may not be in the same world as his brother, but due to his acceptance and sacrifice, there's a chance the two may meet again. Edward teaches himself a valuable lesson he should have learned a long time ago, that no one can cheat death. He even learns of this truth early on, but chooses not to believe in it, stating that there likely isn't anything in the world you could exchange for mom's life. An unfair and unjust world, yes, but you have to find a way to move forward, otherwise you risk losing your own humanity. There's a reason why the series is framed through the naive eyes of children instead of the experienced adults who have already come to accept the cruel reality they live in. So is the ending bad or unsatisfying? While it may not be a happy one, far from it, I don't think it's bad either. A bittersweet ending for the series fitting for such a somber story. It wouldn't have been nearly as impactful if everything turned out to be fine in the end. That's definitely not the point of what the brother's journey was. As for it being unsatisfying, I can't really say much besides that I hope I showed you a new perspective you hadn't seen before. But we're not quite done yet here, are we? How could I talk about FMA's ending without mentioning the most contentious aspect of it all, Dante and the other side of the gate? While she might be absent throughout the majority of the show only really appearing at the very end, her fingerprints can be found through every plot thread in the series. She's a master puppeteer controlling everything from the shadows. Dante's master plan isn't something so shallow as to acquire infinite power from the Philosopher's Stone, but rather something much more selfish immortality, and eternal life. Throughout hundreds of years, Dante has been keeping the Philosopher's Stone's existence a secret from humanity by eliminating those who seek its power. Dante uses the homunculi to do her bidding and manipulates them by falsely promising to turn them human. In return, wide-scale suffering such as the Ishvalan War were used to secretly create Philosopher's Stones. Be it consciously or subconsciously, Dante has convinced herself that she is no longer human and sees herself as a higher being, extending her life to protect the world from humans foolish enough to seek the stone. Dante hates humanity and posits that it's human nature to seek out war and destruction. While she despises humanity for being inherently selfish, she, ironically, is the most selfish of all, using the stones for personal gain. 
In order to achieve immortality, Dante has switched her soul with bodies from youthful females. However, every time she swaps, her current body starts decaying faster and faster. It's almost as if the series is implying that nothing is infinite, and that death is forever eternal. The soul is not immortal in FMA, nothing is, and this is due to the second law of thermodynamics, or more commonly known as entropy. The second law of thermodynamics states that the state of entropy of the entire universe as an isolated system will always increase over time. It also states that the changes in entropy in the universe can never be negative. This basically means that equal effort does not mean equal gain. Losses through heat, sound, movement, or radiation are inevitable. By knowing this law, we can deduce that equivalent exchange in FMA doesn't exist, or in fact, is a lie. People are not born equally. You can live your entire life putting in the effort to get where you are today, yet at the same time, people who are lazy or corrupt can be born into power without having to put in the same effort. The world is a cruel and chaotic place, as Dante states. The only reassurance you have is that everyone lives to die at some point in their life. But what does this have to do with the other side of the gate? Well, after knowing that equivalent exchange doesn't exist, isn't it contradictory that alchemy still exists in the world of FMA? Not really, and here's why. My interpretation of the ending is that our universe and FMA's universe are parallel to each other, but at the same time interconnected through what the characters call the gate. Alchemy is only possible in the world of FMA because it siphons the energy from our universe, making it seem like equivalent exchange exists when in fact the energy is consumed from a different parallel universe. This consumption of energy causes entropy to increase exponentially in our universe, thus causing war and destruction. Why would an increase in entropy cause war and destruction, you may ask? Well, it's pretty simple. Entropy is a measure of disorder, and the higher the disorder in a system, the more chaotic it is. War is often depicted as chaotic in real life and in media, so it isn't too far-fetched to make such a theory. There's even evidence that supports this claim in episode 50. The story of Dante represents the more selfish nature of alchemy, and even critiques the use of alchemy altogether, well-intentioned or not. When there is power to be gained, human conflict is an inevitable outcome, something Dante has come to realize in all her years. It's this catalyst that caused her to be so disconnected from the rest of humanity as she treats both humans and the homunculi as lesser creatures not worthy of understanding. She thinks that if humans were to ever learn the secrets of alchemy or the Philosopher's Stone, they would cause catastrophic damage, which is why she extends her life to prevent this from happening. It's hard to argue against Dante's reasoning since all you have to do is look at the events of the series. However, ironically enough, Dante is guilty of the very same crime she despises, taking countless lives in the pursuit of her own selfish goals. In the end, Full Metal Alchemist may not conclude its story in the way most people expected. However, I couldn't see the series ending any other way, a bittersweet end fitting for such a somber story. Which is why I'll never understand how people could say it came out of nowhere. If you've been paying attention, from the beginning of Edward's journey, there was always this feeling of uncertainty that loomed over the character's decisions. At almost every point, the narrative would challenge the fundamental beliefs of equivalent exchange and question the very idea. The parallel universe wasn't something that was shoehorned in, but foreshadowed throughout the events of the series. A happy conclusion with the brothers reuniting would have contradicted the central ideas that FMA had built up. Equivalent exchange may not exist. Equal effort may not always amount to equal gain. However, you shouldn't run or make excuses for the unfairness in life. That's just a childish act. It's knowing and understanding the world around that you begin to realize just how important moving on is. You are where you are today because of the actions you took. Instead of trying to undo your past mistakes, you should make the most of where you are right now. That is what matters after all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.